There we go. But wait, there's audio issues. Um, there always is. There we go. All right, we're perfect. I think that I think that worked. Um, greetings, everybody. <laughs> Uh, they still can't hear you, and I don't know why. Uh, properties. <laughs> Let's see. Can you just, like, overdub There we go. Saying? Got you. Um, there's subtitles. They can just read it. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, but greetings, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the Initiative Order for today's, this morning's episode of Conan Waves Stained Crimson. Um... Before we jump into the game, uh, I want to quickly go around the table and introduce everybody here with me this morning. Um, we're going to start off with the wonderful uh, Wish Warlock, Shelby. Shelby, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself real quick. It's always me first. Yes, everybody. <laughs> it is me, Shelby, aka Wish Warlock on all the social medias. Uh, I play with uh, Logan on this show, but also... I am over at the Red Hair Inn, which we just played last night, which was really creepy and fun. Uh, I play Zuri, the merchant, and the scoundrel, and I'm scared, very scared. <laughs> but we'll get through it. We'll get through it, you guys, for sure. Get through it together. All right, mm -hmm. next, uh, next we'll go over to the right of me, uh, Tristan. That's me. Uh, Hey guys, I'm Tristan, um, plus one crafting on really just Instagram uh, and Etsy. Um, I play with Logan literally every chance I get. Um, and I'm playing uh, Titus, the Argosian pirate. Um, I am also scared. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of doom, a lot of doom and gloom. Doom, gloom doom gloom sorcery uh and speaking of sorcery uh we're going to move on to the next wonderful individual uh ashlyn hi guys i'm ashlyn i'm dollar store dm mostly on uh instagram but now also on youtube uh, moved there from twitch uh and i'm going to be playing uh katarina the argosian scholar and i'm squishy <laughs> I'm very afraid of dying. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, well, I mean, y'all are in a situation where any of you guys could potentially die. Um, especially the one in the middle of all the pirates. But, you know, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but last and certainly not least, um, the wonderful Andrew. Oh, top of the morning, everyone. I'm Andrew J. Alandi, sometimes known as Duralath. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Andrew J. Alandi, twitch.tv slash Duralath. But here today, playing Awesome, our uh, Stygian mercenary. And I'm always just wondering, will our party meet its doom? Let's get it started. Thank you. And it, I, it will. Yes. It will. It will. Um, yeah, and quick, quick reminder, um, give me doom. When in doubt, give me more doom. Um, and then when you don't know what to do, give me doom. Um, that's because I didn't get enough doom last session, so I'm just going to keep saying it. Um, I also know ways to get doom now. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep a tally. Uh, you guys all start with, with, with three fortune points, and I start with, since, oh no, I start with less doom. <laughs> because Katie's not here. I start with less doom, so I only start with <laughs> I only start with twelve points of doom instead of fifteen. Um, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. It's fine. Twelve points will get me very far today because I don't have to worry about the crossbowmen. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm your I'm your game master, Logan Hanley. You can find me over on the Red Hair Inn, uh, where we do D and D five E stuffs. Um, but without further ado, we're gonna roll the intro for today's session of Conan Waves Stained Crimson.
welcome back. Where we left off. A group of strangers aboard the Ebony Rose. A ship set to travel from Argos to Shem with an important mission. Bring a noble lady to her soon-to-be husband. You are all ab aboard the ship for your own reasons. Uh, and after numerous days at sea, stopping at port at night, the sea became becalmed. The water still. You drop, the captain decided to drop anchor, and in the night, a green fire illuminated the sky. Looking above deck, you see another ship, larger and more imposing, with dozens and dozens of sailors aboard it. Not just any ship, the ship of pirates. You quickly grab your weapons, quickly get ready to defend the ship, and in the moments that take a, or take place after, do a very successful job of fighting the pirates that are attempting to board. Between you and the rest of the crew of the Ebony Rose, you manage to kill quite a few, or you know, kill or or knock out quite a few. Uh, however, your numbers don't quite match up to the numbers that they have. As more and more keep piling on the ship. You are all slowly pushed farther and farther back to the aft of the ship. Captain uh, Zahir, with no other option, as you all struggled and fight, some of you um, flinging yourselves from the masts in an attempt, <laughs> in an attempt to <laughs> kind of whirling dervish your way uh, through the pirates in the sky, unsuccess well successfully. And then unsuccessfully, as the rope snaps and you fall onto the deck of the ship, um, find yourselves outnumbered and overwhelmed. Z Zahir finally calls for a standstill, ordering his crew to stand down. In these moments, the four of you have a choice. Do you attempt to rally the crew and fight the pirates, or do you listen to Captain Zahir? I think I'm limping <laughs> <laughs> over to Zahir, um, but like I don't say anything. <laughs> okay. But uh, I do stop though. Yeah, I stop. I put up my uh, both my tomahawks. Okay, you put up your weapons. Limp Katrina... up. Katrina, oh, go for it. Okay, no, go ahead. Uh, Katrina is going to try and find like the biggest people. And hide behind them. Okay. Um, I would imagine the biggest person would be awesome. Most Probably. likely. Most likely. I don't. I, I. The party itself is is fairly fairly life individuals. So I'm. I mean, I don't know uh, how how tall and, and imposing is awesome. He's a six foot, one hundred eighty five pounder. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Is that bigger than Is that bigger than Titus? About the same. Okay. So yeah, Titus and Awesome are arguably the two two bigger, more imposing cool. folk. There are a couple of sailors who are like, you know, the broad shouldered, like super big bellied sailors, but like there's maybe like one or two of them on the crew of, uh, of Captain Sahir. I'm just trying to draw as little attention to myself as possible. And with with Katrina hiding, uh, Awesome is not putting away his spear. He's still holding in a defensive position, but He's definitely not about to make any moves. He, it, he's heard the hold fast and kind of just, okay. Nobody make a move. Nobody make a move. I'm I'm not going to make a move, but you make a move. I'll move, but definitely make a move. <laughs> definitely the situation of, like, if you strike first, I'm coming after you. 100%. I dig that. Um, and Titus, you were holding off one of the two uh, stairways to the helm. Yeah, so Titus, um, when Zahir calls the the stand down, um, he would like pull the the dagger out of the the enemy pirate that he just stabbed, and kind of back up that stairway and kind of rally around 
um, the captain and the, the crew that's on the that main deck. Awesome. Um, as this is all happening, you guys are beginning to separate. The pirates are kind of beginning beginning to separate from the crew of the Ebony Rose. Um, you notice that the pirates are starting to take the weapons of the crew, piling them up behind them as they do, um, kind of putting them more into the central portion of the ship uh, between the mast and where the helm is, like the stairs thing up to the helm is. Uh, they motion for you all to come that way as well. Do you follow? Do, are they just motioning us to follow or are they motioning us to follow and give up our weapons uh it looks like they are giving you the mo like the motion of like all right come on give up your weapons come sit in the middle um definitely the vibe of got it uh definitely the vibe of like you guys are now captives, prisoners, or at least, you know, unarmed combatants, like former combatants. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to attempt to, if you'd like to attempt to hide weapons. Oh, yes. I, I, uh, I, I will. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. If you'd like to attempt to do that, go ahead and give me a, um, as I, yeah, I'll pull out like, two throwing knives and act like those were my weapon weapons and hand over the throwing knives okay. but if i could hide my tomahawks go I'd ahead play. and give me a as i look in my book um that would be uh and i'm already gonna spend a fortune point on this jeez grab another d20 Smart. I, Smart. these these are very very expensive <laughs> okay there are there's a couple things i'll let you do so you can either yeah. it, it depends on how you want to go about this are you going to try to talk your way through or are you going to try to like stealthily hide them oh like okay yeah can i distract them be like um i like do a little flourish with the throwing knives and be like okay so i'm giving you my knives all right and then as they reach for them, i'll be like I would like these back, please. Okay, these are great. And then, like, do it to the point where they're just frustrated, and they don't like think to search me, as I'm just. All okay. right, and you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll give you a persuade for that. Cool. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it since this is a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna make it a, a D. Hmm. Do I, Do I want to go D two right off the bat? I mean, I'm spending a fortune. Let's Darn let's hard. let's go let's go with the D two. This will be yeah. I mean, right. there's there's like I mean, like I said, there are dozens of pirates on their ships. It's not just the first yeah. couple that you gotta like. You're trying to trying <clears throat> to hide your weapons from the dozens of pirates that are watching you. Yeah. Move and it's my portion. persuade is not great. It's I think it's just average. I'll either okay. give you yeah. We'll go with persuade. Yeah yeah. Okay. No yes, let's go. Ten and a six let's go all right 10 and a six so those are both under um correct yes mine they're... was an 11 the target number. oh wow all right so you're really close so as you're doing that they're like uh all right all right uh yeah uh cool and you, they take your knives and they, they just kind of toss them into the pile of, of scimitars and uh crossbows and you know other other weaponry that that's sitting there uh you take your seat amongst the rest of the cra uh the crew of the Ebony Rose. And I make sure Fred's like close to me. Yep, Fred, um, I'll look at I'll look at Fred's sheet, but Fred definitely follows suit. Um, I would assume Fred would likely try to hide weapons as well. So I will I will make I will make the proper accommodations for Fred. Um, as Fred follows suit, kind of takes a, takes a seat by your side as you do so. Um, Titus. Awesome. Katrina. Katrina is more dangerous with words than she is with swords. So as I've now learned that I get bonus damage for those. Uh, so she's she's going to comply entirely. She's not trying to get stabbed. Awesome. Do you have any weapons on you? I have a saber okay. and a dagger. 
All right, so both of those are taken from you, thrown in the pile. Um, but you go and sit sit next to the rest of the crew. Um, Titus, awesome. He's not happy about it. Uh, and I think as he walks down the stair, the, like the stairway, he would grab the net that's entangled with the dead guy, and like pull that off, and um, kind of do the thing where, uh, like, he'll throw the net in the pile and throw his his talwar, his big uh, sword, in the pile, and like pull out a couple of daggers and like one from his boot and one from his curious and like just throw a bunch of stuff in the pile <laughs> right. just yeah just like so like like you pull your knife your 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 boot knife you pull your second boot knife third boot yeah. knife like you know some somehow you have one in like your armpit yeah like just, you just yeah, keep just throwing like, weapons into the pile mm-hmm. 100 I, 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 I throw like five or six daggers but i'm gonna try to keep my um zybar your what I've got a like a kind of a dagger thing that's at my back. And I'll try to hide that. Um, go ahead and give me a thievery. Thievery or stealth? I'll let you choose between the two. Ooh. I whispered a friend. He could have kept at least four of those. <laughs> it's just a waste of resources. It's tr- really. <laughs> thought i had a thing for this okay i don't um savory or stealth you said i'm gonna i'm gonna roll stealth go for it yes so 2d20 and I- you want to you want to low or you want to roll below your target number okay target of 14 uh that's a nine and a 13 a nine and 13 awesome so yeah so you get well, you'd get one momentum in this uh, from that, because you said your target number is 14, correct? Yes. Or actually, no, I'm going to make that a D2 as well. Um, okay. No no momentum for you. Uh, no. But So you successfully are able to keep your keep your dagger with you um, as you move and you sit with the rest of the crew. Uh, awesome. Uh, and so Awesome is going to place down his spear. And he does have two swords and a sling. He's gonna try to place. He's gonna try to remove one. He's gonna remove one sword. Try to hide the other sword and sling on him. How difficult would that be? Um, I think that since the running, the running kind of challenge is is a D two. I'm gonna I'm gonna have you pick. You can choose between uh, stealth or thievery. I know you're not technically stealing anything, but. Stealth or thievery, um, D two. If you'd like to spend, we're we're gonna spend the fortune point because that's a fourteen and four. The target number's eleven. All right, so... and you can spend a fortune point to yep. make that an auto success. So that's yep. that's good. Um, cool. And you so with that, you successfully are able to hide your sword. Uh, mm-hmm. no problem. Your sling, very easy, is, like, one of those where, like, you can, like, tuck into your waistband and throw your shirt over it. Um, yeah. Because it's, you know, like, just, like, this little thing. Um, yeah. no problem whatsoever. Uh, the sword, a little bit more difficult, and, like, there are p- parts where, like, it's poking and protruding, but between yeah. that and, like, the pack that you carry on you, um, it's, it's pretty hard to notice. Um, but you all sit down. As you do... You can see the pirate captain Daimos begin to walk across as a gangplank is formed uh, from ship to ship. He kind of saunters down the gangplank as he does kind of this full um, kind of r- roguish pirate look to him. This sm- heavy smirk on his face, uh, almost like he's he's playing a game. Uh, as he reaches the deck of the ship, he points to the cabin's. Uh, below the helm and a handful of his crew begin to go in there you hear doors slamming you hear things moving and shoving uh, and you hear a quick or, or you hear a scream of almost a fright 
and of, of shock. And in the moments that follow, um, Lady Emerena is pulled from, from the captain's quarters out onto the deck of the ship. Captain looks her over really quick. And as he does, the sorcerer follows in his footsteps, coming down the gangplank. Oh, go ahead. Katrina is hiding even further behind uh, everybody. Okay, go ahead and give me a... Let's see how obvious your hiding is. Go ahead and give me a stealth check to see how well you can hide amongst everybody. It'll just be a simple D1. Cool. I'm really good at that. Uh, okay, one of those was a one. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a crit success, so there you go. Um, Which is great, because the other one was a 19. <laughs> you do generate a point of momentum for that. Um, so you can use that to kind of just like... I'll say that that that's... You just like fully are like just like hunkered down between like three or four of these crew members, Titus and Awesome, just like forming this like shield around you where you're just kind of like, you have this barrier of like people who are like sit sitting like two or, you know, a foot or so taller than you. Um, as you do so, the sorcerer walks down and you can hear this very kind of raspy breath. Did you find what you were looking for, Captain? I, yes, this will do, and he extends his hand toward Lady Emerena, who quickly goes to, like, slap him, and as he does, or as she does, he, with his opposite arm, catches the hand. You will learn, in time, that I am generous to those who treat me with the respect that I treat them. He turns to two, two of the crew members. I take her back and give her my quarters. Two of her, the crewmen grab Lady Emerina and begin to pull her. She resists, but only as much as somebody who, you know, is ultimately powerless as they can literally lift her up in the air as they drag her from the, crew, from the deck of the ship over to the opposite ship. Anybody doing anything, or are you just gonna sit and watch? No, no, Shelby, you look like you want to do something. <laughs> uh, Shelby wants to do anything. Zuri will stand the fuck still. <laughs> um, as you all sit there. Captain Zaheer is brought before Captain Dimos. As they're standing there looking at each other, Zaheer, uh, Zaheer kind of standing proudly, but still hurt. It is an honorable thing, Zaheer, of you to try to fight to protect that one. And your crew obviously respects you. So, as a token of my appreciation, and he goes and he full on, like, just punches him straight in the gut. Zaheer reels over, coughing up blood as he takes the blow. Um, I will do that instead of running a sword through you. Your crew has discipline and can be of use to me. So, he turns to the crew. You have two options. Option one, you go below deck and begin bringing anything of worth and any supplies up to my ship. Option two, you go into the water. In those moments, the crew looks at each other, kind of grumbles, and you can tell, like, they're pissed off. They don't want to be in this situation. Um, they don't want to be put in a situation where they have to now move everything from their ship over to this other ship. Um, but when given the choice between that or essentially drowning, uh, there isn't really much of an option, and they begrudgingly begin to stand and go below deck, getting the winches and pulley systems in place ready to start moving the 
um, the different supplies that are in, in the hold of the ship over to um, over to the Devil Shadow, which is uh, Daimos' ship. As that's happening, the rest of you either can help or are escorted down to the hold itself where you are put for the time being. The hold of our ship or the hold the of hold the of, ship? The hold of the hold of the Ebony Rose. It's the hold of the ship you're currently on. Um, are, are the people bringing supplies, are they going between the two ships? Yes, correct. So they're using pulley systems to pull everything up from the hold of the Ebony Rose and then they're... Um, there's different like winches on the on the devil shadow as well to kind of like help lift some of the heavier crates and boxes. But generally, there's enough people where they can they can get them across with gangplanks. Yeah, so that'll take that takes about this is that's gonna take over the span of probably about a half hour, give or take. So you guys will have mm-hmm. some time in the hold of the ship um, where you guys can either help out with that process and help speed it along, or you guys can kind of sit and, and plan. Um, Zaheer is left on the deck of the ship. He's sitting over on one of the stairways that lead up to the uh, to the helm. Um, definitely in pain, definitely hurting, um, but alive uh, and breathing. Uh, are the pirates watching us like closely? Yeah, at this point, the pirate the, the remaining or like the pirate crew is helping to some extent, helping facilitate what's going on with the stuff below decks, but there are also several that are keeping eyes on you as you guys are um, prime, you know, fighters. And p- people who are capable, they definitely could tell they were fighting people more experienced than the crew, um, with the exception of some, but... Um... So I want to act like I am moving things from one ship to the other, but can I just, when I'm making my way over to the Devil's Shadow, can I try to, like, get a look, good look at the ship, like, see what, see what's, see what it's looking like, Ooh, you know, uh, yeah. how many people are there, uh, how many decks there are what they have in their hull as we're moving supplies over. Oh, good question. Yeah, that would be a... Go ahead and give me a... Um, observation. Give me an observation. We'll say D, D1. Cool. Uh, observation was... Okay, so I have an 8, but I also got a 12, and my target number was a 12. Is the meets so it meets or if it hits? Meets it, meets it, beats it. So you need to make okay. it or, make it or blow. Yep. Okay, so 8 and 12. 8 and 12. So two successes. So you'll have a point of momentum there that you can kind of add to the pool um, and use as you see fit when we need when you need to. Um, but with that, you are able to identify that the Devil's Shadow, um, significantly larger ship, um, it has three masts instead of the um, instead of the one that or the two that yours uh, the ebony rose has uh, the hold of the ship is uh, very large it has to hold and it's multiple tiers so like there's a middle a middle deck which looks to be mostly crew quarters uh, as there are kind of close to uh, post combat probably closer to about 60 ish give or take um, crew members of the the devil's shadow the hold itself you can see is stockpiled with not only food and fresh water uh but do, does have chests containing different gold uh different you know kind of golds and, tre- and treasures um as a whole the crew of the devil shadow turns quite a profit you would imagine as a business person yourself uh whatever pilfering and pillaging or raiding that they do uh any form of piracy they make good money on it and captain daimos is a very success is very successful at what he does um you don't see any sign of 
of Lady Emerena at this point in time. You have no idea where the captain's captains. You have an idea of where the captain's quarters are, right? Like right underneath the helm, you know, ba- aft portion of of the top deck of the ship. Um, but no sign. Uh, don't even see or notice any sort of guards in a, an area where they look like they're like guarding a door or anything. Okay. Um. This is stupid. Uh. <laughs> I don't know anything about ships, but as I'm like looking around, do I see anything that they're like, I know where the part where all the treasure is probably being looked at really, really closely. Mm -hmm. Is there any part that's not where I could possibly, I don't know. (laughs) This is dumb. Start something to handicap this vessel. Or no? Would you say that's just wild? Um, (laughs) let's see. So I would say that would take a. It'd take a while, right? It would. Well, it take it would take a while. It'd be something that only takes a while. But on a ship this size, for one person, um, to like do something that would cause that much damn like significant significant trauma to a ship of that of this size, um, go ahead and make a sailing test for me. Let's say D sailing test D two. D two. Cool. I was almost at three. Almost at three. Uh, no, I only had one success. I'd say with that, looking at the ship, they're uh, you're you're not getting. They're kind of watching you at every step of the process of transporting these goods. Um, on top of that, thinking on it. Um, you don't think that it'd be the wisest option, um, kind of like for what I said, it's a big ship, putting a tiny hole in a big ship isn't going to sink it very fast. No. You'd need something that has the, that would do, do enough damage to open up a wide enough hole to like flood the lower, the lower cabins and the hold with enough water to pull the, the ship downward. Um, something you don't have the tools or the resources to do in the moment. Okay, so then I'll just go back to the others, uh, to Awesome Katrina and Titus, and tell them everything I saw. Awesome. Uh, yeah. While you're doing that, Awesome, uh, Katrina, Titus, anything that you would like to be doing? Katrina is, you know in Assassin's Creed where you're like walking with all the crowds all the time? Mm -hmm. she's doing that so she's going back and forth between the ships but she's particularly paying attention to if she sees that sorcerer anywhere oh if she sees yeah the sorcerer stays on the deck of the ebony rose um so you can kind of look and kind of wrap around you go up to the deck of um the devil's shadow go ahead and give me a sorcery roll Make it a D one. Uh, those are both ones. Those are wow. <laughs> um, Yo, let's go snake eyes. Cool. So, so. <laughs> um, right. One of those is into seven. Nope. Those are both ones. Looking around, and you even take a moment to kind of loop up to the helm. You're very much just like hiding in people's shadows as you're doing this. Um, you're hiding in people's shadows as you do this. Um, I believe he's skinny. Six. <laughs> I'm going to start you off with, we'll start with, with four, uh, Shelby, to answer your question. Um, yeah, but you go up to the top, and you can see there, kind of in the far, far aft of the of the helm, uh, far back of, of that portion of the ship, you can see a some sort of ritual circle looking at it. Uh, this looks like a lot of the detail is in, she- in, in Shemit, or Shem... Might Shemite? Um, I know it. And you Shemitish. can clearly Shemitish. There we go. Um, you can clearly tell that this is the ritual that he used to conjure the green light that's above. Um, it looks at like at this point that whatever the circle is is no longer active. So this is something that the sorcerer is keeping up themselves, uh, looping back around. You can 
and kind of looping onto the main deck of the Ebony Rose and, and slinking and, and moving your way through the crowd, looking at the um, looking at the sorcerer. Go ahead and give me... Actually, no, I'll, I'll, you, I'll roll over your two net ones. Um, looking at him, there is something dark and foreboding about his nature. Uh, you can't quite place a finger on it. Uh, but what you can tell is that there's a bit around his neck, there's a bit of coral. Coral inlaid with gems of different colors and sizes to kind of fit the, no the nooks and crannies of it. Um, you've seen things like this before. Uh, this would be somebody who has an innate connection with those entities that dwell deep in the ocean. They use symbols like these, either as a symbol to show kind of the type of entity that they draw power from or that they seek to honor. Um, but these are also used as a way to kind of find um, and look for others of their kind. Make a... Hmm. Let me see. Want to... I want to say lore. But let me double check. Make a... Lore would be great. Yeah, make a, make a, <laughs> make a, make a, make a, make a lore check for me. That's, That's a 16. Oh, jeez. Um, ow, ew. Um, it's just a do one. <laughs> She's good at being smart. She's not. She's squishy. This is what she does well. <laughs> uh, those are both successes. S successes. So what you remember, you've seen almost an identical version of this on on somebody you on the Ebony Rose. Titus has been wearing an almost identical version of this necklace. Cool, I'm going to mute for a while. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but Titus, Titus, while, while, and uh, Titus and Awesome, while Zuri is over kind of doing their thing, and, um, and Katrina is also mm -hmm. making rounds, what are the two of you doing? I think Titus is also helping fairy stuff between the ships. Um, would would I know? Would I know where the devil shadows, like where their home port is, like where they would be headed next? Ooh, good question. Um, I'll give you a sailing check for that. D one. As I now pull up the map for. It's right behind me, but I can't turn around to look at it. Sadly. Uh, are we still in my home waters? Um, barely. So, barely. Okay, so that's that reduces uh, that reduces the level by one. Okay, so then it's wow. Okay, cool. So then that's just a do. It's a d a d zero. So you do it. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of um, there are a couple of ports uh, off of the western sea uh, you guys are currently between um kind of between oscalon and uh kamai so it could be either of those two places if they continued farther south uh into stygia and kush you could they could go to karnath or to Zab uh zabella uh but the two closest ports would be uh oscalon and kamai um, <clears throat> has Demos recognized me yet? Uh, ooh, good question. Um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll for that. Because I've, Titus has definitely been mean mugging him since he set foot on the ship. Um, let me see. Let me look, let me look, let me do a roll. Um, I would say he's made note of you. You've watched him, you know, kind of, and in, in, in the way of 
you've been mean mugging him. He's made eye contact with you, but not like fully like to the level of like, oh man, I remember him, but more of like, why is this dude mean mugging me? Po- kind of is pointing to a couple of his crew members to keep an eye out on you. So like where you move, you notice that there are a couple crew members that tend to follow you. Um, they, he definitely can tell that you are a skilled, like they can definitely tell you're a skilled sailor. Um, but not fully, fully like, oh, hey, it's it's Titus. We know him from work. Um, it's that fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that guy. Um, yeah, definitely not definitely not that vibe yet. Um, or at least it's not clicking for him. He's got more pressing matters. Um, but yeah. Okay. I'll, um, oh, go ahead, Titus. Uh, that's it. Cool. For and, now. And awesome. Anything from you? The awesome will be helping... Uh, transport gold and, uh, and whatever treasure between the two ships uh, along the pathway do I see any weapon racks you know not gonna try to steal but do I do I see any is there any along the path um in the hold well so you guys yeah. have to go through the kind of crew quarters to get to the hold of the devil's shadow so as you do so uh, there's definitely weapon racks and like even on the main deck of the ship there are racks for you know, boarding axes and, and uh, scimitars and, um, you know, well, a low deck. Part... Go ahead. There's spears. Oh, there's spears. Um, hmm. They got taken away. <laughs> I mean, they took they took away your spear, so yeah. Um, your spear would be... They, you notice that, like, the pile that has your... that of your weapons has also been kind of transported as well. Uh, okay. Mostly by the crew. They're not giving you guys weapons. Uh, but no, they're, they're, I, I would say there's a handful, a various assortment of, like, general weaponry that could be used on a ship. So, yeah, spears would be there. Um, and the other thing, what I would actually like to do, as we're transporting gold, I would like to try to sneak some of the gold into my own pockets as we, as we, as I transport it. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the, the main portion of gold that you'd be transporting would either be mm-hmm. the little bit of gold that, um, Zaheer keeps on the ship, mm-hmm. or, um, also, uh, Lady Emerina's dowry would be, would be the, would be the other portion. Um, hmm. Hmm. yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try to sneak the dowry and, uh. Yeah. Go, go ahead and give me a thievery. Now that that's like a large chest, so like you grab one end, another guy grabs another end, uh, and you guys are transporting oh, okay. it across. Titus. Oh, Titus grabs, Titus the, grabs the other end. Hand. Titus grabs yeah. the other end. There you go, the two of you. Um, so go uh, ahead and give me a thievery check for this. We're gonna make it um, a D two because there are just there. I mean, there's a lot of pi- like there are a lot of pirates that are watching you all as you're doing this. Uh, I would. I would try to assist him by like shielding with my body, or like okay. trying to, you know, because because some of the pirates that are following us around are watching me specifically. Yeah, one oh. of those rolls is a seventeen. Okay, the other is a one. Oh wow. Okay. So with that, yeah, very successfully, as you kind of get into a tighter. Um, a tighter hallway or passageway in the lower decks of the ship, you're able to very, like, sneakily, like, open up with your hand, stick it into the chest, and, like, grab a handful and shove it into your own bag. Um, being kind of in the front, you're doing it, like, where you, like, reach back, grab, and then, like, throw it in your fanny pack in the front. Um, <laughs> you now have a, fanny. you can now, you now can have, you now have a, a, a fantastical fanny pack. No. Um, yes. but, like, throw it in, throw it into your bag. Um, and are able to kind of go without without any sort of issue. Um, fuck, how much gold do I give you? Um, you know what? Uh, roll roll a d20 because I feel like at the bare minimum you could fit 20 coins in your hand. And then times it by 10. Shut up! Mm-hmm. I swear to God, and it, I it rolled a one again. It's 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 an Oculus. It's an Umbral. So. It it's a one? a one. Well, okay. So hang on. Let me let me let me tell you something before you get too excited. 
Uh, Are you gold. reversing the numbers on yes, me? Yes, well, one gold well, coin. Well, this was this was this was to see how many gold. No, I'll I'll we'll we'll honor the fact that we're playing Conan, where <laughs> the lower you go, the higher the number. Um, okay. Also, I want to reward you for trying to steal money. Um, so I'll give you, <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll give you because yeah, I mean it probably won't be worth anything where you guys are going soon. Uh, what? Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> No, you you get a handful of coins. I'll I'll say you get twenty gold pieces um, that you can add to your your sheet there. Perfect. Um, cool. But, but yeah. So as you guys all kind of at this point have transported everything of worth um, in terms of food and and water, those sort of supplies, only a handful of the crates and barrels that contain the, the resources needed for survival at sea are transported over to the Devil Shadow. The vast majority is uh, is left on the Ebony Rose. Um, oh, how kind. Captain, Captain <laughs> Dimos is a very well-prepared captain and brings everything necessary for his crew, as can be seen. Um, and so in those moments where you are, the crew of the Ebony Rose is starting to lift boxes of foodstuffs, uh, Dimos quickly tells them to put it back into the, the hold of the Ebony Rose. Um, in these moments, as you go, go back, you can see a conversation and begin to hear a conversation between the sorcerer and Dimos. Uh, Dimos is... Okay, so uh, at this point, if anyone is interested, and as he's saying interested, the sorcerer holds up his hand. I have other ideas for these ones. The one who has helped us find the ship and secure your prize demands more. Uh, um, so, I don't know. That was not, well, I guess that was kind of part of our deal. You, hmm. Okay, never mind. Um, Mur, it is. Um, it, it would the fates of these individuals are up to you. Uh, I will leave crew here, and you can instruct them as such. And he kind of claps his hands really quick, and I bid you all adieu. He kind of turns and looks toward you, Titus, and gives a smirk and a wink. Uh, and bows very, very deeply, and then turns and walks across the ship. Um, as he Let does, see you again. as he does so, he uh, two of the crew members go and grab uh, Zahir and drag him across to the Devil Shadow as well. Um, okay, now, <laughs> ah, Titus, come here, please as the sorcerer makes eye contact with you. I believe you have something that belongs to me. Titus will reach down and just jerk the, the necklace off of his neck and throw it at the sorcerer's feet. It's safe to say that you never met my mother, yes? Oh, no. I did not. Uh, Katrina, go ahead and make another sorcery for me. D1. Yep. Uh, both success. So, with this, kind of looking at the situation and, and hearing how this has come across, um, very easy to assume some sort of charming or memory altering sorcery was at play here to convince Titus of you know, going, going along with this agreement. Um, he reaches down, bends down, and picks up the amulet and puts it around. So now he has two on his around his neck. You all go to the hold. And it oh go ahead, Titus. <clears throat> this might be a really bad idea. Um I would hate to kill you as, two sessions in, but you know, we'll see. Uh, okay. Hold on. One second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go gonna for roll, it. Do it. Do it. Maybe like we should impulse. think about this. Do it. That's a 19. Titus is gonna do something stupid as he reaches down 
to pick up the necklace, uh, Titus is going to attempt to just stomp down and grind it under his heel. The amulet? Yeah. I'll make that face, Logan. He, he's mad. Okay, go ahead and make a, a, a athletics for me. Titus, did you just set off a bomb on the ship? Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, that's a nine and a natural one. Okay. Uh, athletics is 11. We're rolling fire so today, but this might cost one. Successes, right? Yeah. Um, how many successes? Three. Three. Okay. Oh, God. Um... Okay, okay. As you do so, it breaks and shatters the rubies and the emeralds and various um, gems kind of scatter across the deck of the ship. I see. Interesting. And he stares at you. I don't enjoy being used, sorcerer. I don't enjoy being lied to. Go ahead and... Oh, next page. Next page. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's looking up the deep magic. Well, wow, shit. Yeah. I'm looking... I'm looking... Yeah. I'm, look, I'm trying to remember the, the I'm, tr I'm also trying to remember the rules for how things go. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. I would, gonna... I would like to use my other fortune to help me. To help you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> well. You know what? I have doom. I have doom, so I'm gonna use it because this is fun. Um, <laughs> oh, here it goes. As 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 it shatters, he holds on to his own, and he begins invoking. And I'm gonna spend three doom because the fuck I can. Um, and uh, as he okay. does around you in almost a triangle, you watch from the deck of the ship, or not from the or I'm not not around you. Sorry, starting to hear this kind of cracking and clawing at the side at the back end of the ship and from it come three of these shambling undead you know riddled and like fish eaten on the inside like almost husks of zombies that crawl up and over and make their way into a triangle formation around you it is not wise to anger those who dwell in the depths. This is just a fragment of what they can do for me. What they could do for you if you allowed them to. And he kind of turns and he makes eye, can eye contact for a moment with you, Katrina. Uh, as he kind of glances, but he, he stares hard at you. Now, you all will go below decks. And with that, the pirates start to kind of corral you and the rest of the crew of the Ebony Rose into the hold of the ship, where the grates are put into place. As you guys are brought down there, it's only you at this point with the crew, um, who are a combination of severely injured, um, some of them have, you know, minor bumps and bruises. Some of them are, bare, you know, have little scrapes, um, varying degrees of injuries. Uh, as you as you do this, bring me seawater and pour it over the grates. And in the moments that follow, seawater is brought and pulled above the or onto the deck of the ship. Begin to splash over the grates down into the hold. A soft chanting begins. Almost like a hum. As an invocation a ritual of sorts is beginning on the deck of the Ebony Rose. 
at this point, the crew immediately turns on Titus in these moments, almost backing him into a corner, throwing various slurs and, you know, and uh, swear words at him for revealing and being in league with the sorcerer. Listen, guys, come on. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a victim of circumstance. I'm a victim here too. It's, this was this was never a plan. How are you a victim? You you were one of them this whole time. That's not entirely yeah, true. Somebody for the back. Look at how he's dressed. He's he's dressed like the other crew, kind of. So yes, I'm a pirate. I'm not one of their pirates. I have my own ship. A pirate is still a pirate. True. How are we? To, However, how, how are we to know that you weren't attempting to split the profit with Dimos? Katrina's going guy. to step between Titus and the crew. If okay. he was intending to split the profit, would he be down here with us? The solid point. Also, you've sailed these waters long enough to know Dimos doesn't split profit. Go ahead, go ahead and make a per persuade. I'll leave that. I'll leave that to either one of you to choose which one you would, which one of you would rather roll. Uh... I'm gonna let Katrina roll that. <laughs> Katrina's a decent talker. Yeah. Uh, that is two successes. Two successes. Awesome. Um, cool. As you say Which this, a couple of them like are still are begrudgingly, uh, you know, kind of backing off. One of them, may go, yeah, if he was going to split the profits with Dimos, why, why? Why would he still be down here? And the rest of them are like, "Shut up!" Like, you know, like you're not help, like you're not helping us. Yeah. We want to, we want to gang <laughs> up on this guy. Um, but no, you're able to, you know, satiate the crew, kind of calm them down uh, to the point where they're not immediately at Titus's throat. Uh, they still are kind of over the shoulder, giving him glaring looks and and begrudgingly accepting that you all are sharing the same mutual fate at the at the moment. Mm -hmm. As they kind of back off a little, Katrina's going to kind of turn a little bit to Titus and very much under her breath. I don't think you've escaped that conversation. I didn't figure that was oh, something yeah, I was going to get out of. Later. Sure. Like very, like, scolding parental almost. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got you out of your freaking detention, but you're in big trouble, mister. We are talking in the car on the way yeah. home. Yeah. And she's going to uh, turn her attention to whatever invocation is being said. Mm -hmm. uh, she, like, does she get a sense of what the intent of the uh, invocation is? Make a D2 sorcery. Cool. Uh, is he speaking in Shemitish? Shemitish. Yes, he is. Cool. I speak yeah. that. Uh, that is a one and a nine on my Jesus thirteen. God damn! Oh. <sighs> um, you cool. use a momentum. Use a momentum to do what? Know. She already Jeez. got a crit. <laughs> to do can what? We, like, can we ask for more stuff? I just threw my D one or D two. Um, this it was, is D two, but I did three she, success. She got three success. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For Should those we have paying more? attention at home, can we have more? Uh, Shut that up. gives us nine <laughs> momentum. Shut up, Shelby. Uh, you can't have more <laughs> than six. Caps at six. Uh, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Use it. <laughs> Use, Use our it. momentum um, for what? <laughs> for something. I would say that you would know that um, the ritual being performed. Uh, refers to some sort of deep lurker, deep dweller. 
um, but you also have notes of destruction, of fire, of sacrifice for the gifts that this individual was given just recently. The gift of being able to find, to locate, and to help the person that they are tied to. The ritual is not a very long one, from what you can tell as well. You only have moments, minutes, m minutes to moments. You're not quite sure, but it's short to figure out what you all want to do before the ritual is complete and whatever destruction, whatever sacrifice is made affects the ship yep. or affects you. Uh, very, very quickly. Are there any, like, she's just darting eyes now, any sort of portholes or... Yeah, so looking at the, the deck... Ways of, of getting out of the hold. <laughs> looking at the hold that you guys are in. So you guys have the um, the general crew quarters, um, the general crew quarters, uh, and you know, other sorts of, like, living spaces within the hold of the ship. Uh, there are portholes on either side. There are probably about two or three on each side. Um, the back portion, there's no, there's nothing on the aft of the ship, uh, but there are definitely portholes. There are the grates that are above you, um, and the ship is also made of wood. Yep. You would know, additionally, that on the deck of the ship, there are two kind of, you know, smaller long long boats that would be used as your like escape vessels um, in in mm -hmm. need in need of departure from the ship or like your expeditionary ships. Um, how big are the portholes? Like, could someone fit through them? Um, doing a quick, you know, look. Uh, <laughs> the like Tinkerbell hip. Tinkerbell, Marilyn Monroe, you know, the, uh, the, doing a quick size comparison. Um, you, you guys could definitely fit. If you could remove the porthole covers, you might be able to kind of chisel your way around to make it a bigger space. Um, yeah. But you'd need to find weapons you don't have any currently that you know of. Yeah. Um, I am going to really just, like, Full speed talking. Like, okay. Ritual. Bad. Destruction. If we can get out, we should get out. The crew's eyes all generally go wide at the sound of ritual and and we need to get like there's a little bit how much of how much panic is in your voice? That's a good question. Not I'm I'm keep I'm just trying to be succinct. Uh she's not panicking and she's keeping a very level tone of we get out, we're fine. Porthole, open. She's just min she's just ch using as few words as she can to get her point across as quickly as possible. As as we were shuttling stuff onto the double shadow, would would I have noticed anywhere that I think that we could hide? On the double shadow. Um, cause some, somehow getting into a rowboat when something big enough to eat our ship is coming, doesn't seem like the best plan. Or if the ship is set, I'm thinking it might be the ship is getting set on fire and being sunk all, sink down to the bottoms. Um, I mean, there are definitely places for you to hide where you could hide you plus 18 ish crew members. Probably not. Um, not everyone's gonna make it. Yeah. That's why we get boats. Yeah. Right. Getting off the ship, that's a solid plan. But I feel like there needs to be a plan after that. So what are we doing? I start chopping at the porthole yeah. while they're Let's, talking about it. Step one. <laughs> step one. <laughs> Let's work on step one while we're talking about All right. it. Um so so what I will also say is that the porthole is above sea level but not like super above sea level so That's when you okay. make when you make this hole 
water will, like when you open up the porthole, if you're going to chisel around it, water will start to come in, but it'll be one of those where water can come in and you guys can kind of step out into and like swim into the ocean. Um, from there, I, I, I will meta just slightly because there would be things Titus would know as a sailor. From there, it is generally uh, how this boat sits. It's generally easy to climb up onto the deck of the ship from sea level. Uh, the, the Ebony Rose doesn't sit so high in the water um, that it would be an impossible climb. It would be difficult, but not impossible. But as you're chiseling away, give me a... Let's see. Let's go with a melee. Like, give me a melee. Okay. Also, I don't know. Is there anything I can use for the momentum? You gotta uh, use some of this. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Let me... I know. I was trying to find that in the rules. Let me look at my cheat sheet. Momentum spends table. Momentum spends uh, table. Oh! Hey. Wait, it's on page 126. Yeah, can I create an opportunity and add a, I think, an, a D20 to a future skill test? You can also uh, add plus one to a successful damage. Wait, or hang on. Plus one damage to a successful attack. Yeah, oh, you yeah, plus... you said you wanted to do damage, a you melee do, thing? You can do bonus damage. You can do reroll damage. You can do... Um... I don't even know how to do this anymore. Okay, here we go. Yeah. We know how to play this game. Okay. We're doing it. <clears throat> no, I'd say you can do bonus damage for sure. Cool, cool. Let me find... I forgot which one is my... Oh, here we go. So melee. Uh, Just one success. That's a 10. Okay. Uh, Go ahead and roll damage for your, your axes. Right. And I have a three. A three next a, to it. Yep. So, so it's three. Three d six. Six. Okay. Yep. God, I forgot all of this stuff. Okay. That's fun. We're relearning together. Okay, so I have a Give five and a please. six. A five and a six. Is... So that's two points of damage, and then special effect, which for your for your thing for your thing vicious. Is vicious. So I get to roll again, right? Um, uh, let me, f is that what it does? I think that's what vicious, um, no, I'm asking, because I don't remember. You're good. I have the book. Let me find it real quick. This is, listen, this is why we do this. Um, this is why we do it. Vicious da -da 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 is an attack with the quality inflicts X additional damage for each effect roll. So yeah, roll two more d6s. Cool. And the four, four, three and four are Three nothing, and four right? are nothing. Five and six for this, because it's an effect, will be only plus one. And then one is one and two is two. Okay, got it. So it's two right now. Rolling again. And one more. So, one more. Three, so points three points of, of damage. damage. And I will add a momentum to add like one point of damage to that. I okay. guess. So, so four. four. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Four points of damage. Um, I'd say, yeah, you definitely start cracking away at the wood on the sides of the porthole that you're on. Uh, very easily able to do so with with, a, with four points of damage. That's enough to kind of start breaking and chipping away um, to the point where that side, like one side of the porthole, you can kind of push out and turn uh, very easily and kind of pop that porthole, porthole out with like another like foot-ish of room to the side someone help someone help to make this go faster oh can we spend a momentum to make this go faster um to speed up speed it up yeah. I, that I, would yeah, be there's one that allows you to do like a Sweet. normal action in like a quick yep that would be a time required yeah is that is that a is that a momentum thing or is that a fortune yeah. thing game master reduces the amount of in-game time that a task requires to complete a task that might take a whole day or several hours may now only take a single hour for example uh the provide, the precise effects of this and the cost are left up to the game master's discretion that's that's momentum so let's say um for each person helping it will be one momentum i will help all right so that's we'll say the momentum you spent we'll we'll retcon the momentum you spent on the bonus damage so one, oh, okay. one, one well or i'll include that with this so one momentum for for Zuri, one momentum for awesome. Yeah, and I'll <clears throat> I'll 
help as well. One for Titus, so three momentum spent. Cool. Got it. Um, so you guys are at three now. Um, and then, uh, so with that, I'll say it takes you... Um, it, I mean, it still takes you a minute, a hot minute, because you want to organize it in, like, with Titus's leadership, you're able to create enough of a gap so that way the last and final hit is the one where water rushes in and you guys can kind of single file rush out um the big thing for you guys is that there are a lot of you right um there are 18 of you um water can come in will come in at a steady rate but you guys can also squeeze through and get out at a, at that a kind of similar rate um but you guys will need to get above deck the crew at this point uh, is also kind of scrambling looking around for weapons they go to like move like grab the porthole or the, the grates up at the top and try to push them up, and they are not budging at all. Um, going back to Katrina, kind of reflecting whatever sorcery is at work, when the seawater hit the grates, yeah. that is likely the, 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 the locking mechanism that kept them in place um, yeah. and helped build the foundation for this ritual. Um, Additionally, when like their their hands are reaching for the grates, they're just getting stomped on and their fingers crushed by the pirates that are on, on the deck above. Mm -hmm. um, you all start to make your way out of the ship. Um, as you do, you hear a final just kind of like ah! from above, and as you do, you see this bright green flame just. <sighs> The light where the grates were kind of shoot down a little but shoot up and you all hear from above bring the oil send it to the deep yeah <laughs> and then the slow receding of footsteps as the sorcerer walks the gangplank to the other ship you are now all in the water you can hear the movements above deck of people shifting um, you can hear in uh, the briefest of moments a splash and then a <sighs> followed by the scream of a couple of the crew members of the Ebony Rose who still were like grabbing under the grate to try to get out as oil is dumped on them and they are lit on fire. Uh, you turn around at that point, the rest of them are like now rushing toward the hole that you've made, all kind of going into the water. The boat you look up as you guys are starting to like begin to climb up the side of the ship. The boat is now aflame. Mm -hmm. Streaking up toward the sails, making its way toward the aft, you know, to toward all portions of the ship as it's expanding from where these grates were. Um, Katrina is staying kind of near the porthole, trying to keep, like, yes, they're all panicking because people just got set on fire, but also like, you need to, and trying to like, very quietly get them out so that the honestly we're using the screams of the people who are burning as cover uh we go, need a distraction go ahead and yeah, either we need a distraction go she's ahead not and, saying that part out loud but go ahead and either make a command uh sure make a command or a council uh command roll we'll go with command roll. there it is all the same for me cool um that is one success one success. Okay. I'd say there were probably a handful who are closer to the to the guys who are lit on fire who are like, we need to get out of here and are starting to cause a commotion. Um, but those who are like immediately in front of you, you're able to calm to the point where yeah. they can turn and kind of direct the, um, the craze that are in the back in the right direction. You all make cool. your way. And I'm trying to get everybody to like hold close to the water's edge onto the boat so that we are as visible as invisible as possible mm -hmm. um as you do that as titus and awesome and zuri i imagine you guys are starting to climb the ship as the three of you are climbing the ship to 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 see what is going on on the deck that's where we're going to take our break <sighs> oh boy we're going to take a quick 10 minute break um for those of you who are watching please uh oh why is our break screen not working give me two who seconds knows? while i make sure that our break screen is the right break screen 
Um, oh, and, not, no. and not a black screen, because I want to transition properly. Um, talk about some things that are, I don't know. Saying what we think, guys. <laughs> it's not what we think. Yeah, good this morning. Is... Good morning. It's good to be back. Welcome. It really is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting in the groove of it. Absolutely. Right? We're not I dead yet. To... We're not dead. We're not dead yet. We're not dead hey, yet. Hey, <laughs> in, in the grand scheme of things, like. Yeah. yeah you'll be stone dead in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the ship's on fire. It's about to sink. Uh, that lady is gone. She's absolutely gone. Uh, but yeah, hey, yeah. we're alive. Uh, we're right? Alive. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're living. I got extra money. And I was... have, I have a game master question offline when, when we get to break. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know why for some reason our break screen isn't working. Um, Woo! I'm just gonna put us back on the start screen. Two uh, and more we'll, hours. And we'll figure two, two. Yeah. No. Well, we'll figure it out because we need. We do need to go to break because we. Some of us. Some of us need to. Some of us need to. Yeah. We need a break. Um, but I'm gonna put us back on the start screen. I'm gonna put us on the start screen. Uh, real quick. Uh, while I try to figure out the problem. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in about ten minutes. Bye.
So anyway, that's why I had that necklace. <laughs> cool scene. While they're hanging off. While they're, while they're hanging off the edge of the ship. Uh, no. Uh, but as you guys are making your way up onto the deck of the ship, ship in this moment, um, the, the deck of the ebony rose aflame. Uh, Zuri, Titus, awesome as the three of, you, three of you are climbing and you reach kind of that point where you can start to lift yourself up and peek over the edge, you notice the flame, The flames have now shifted from this like emerald and like dark green coloration to now the normal color of flames as it's now licking and moving its way across the deck of the ship into the hold um, and across the ebony rows. The gang plank to the devil's shadow. Stand up. Um, the game clip to the Devil Shadow has been removed. All of the pirates are off of the deck of the Ebony Rose. And the ship is somewhat yours. The Devil Shadow beginning to pull away now as the illuminating green light is slowly starting to fade. The only source of illumination now coming from the burning Ebony Rose. The you mentioned that there are like longboats. Yeah, so there are. You would know that there are two, um, like longer rowboat style ships or like vessels that would be used as emergency craft aboard the Ebony Rose. Uh. Yeah, I'll start, like, rallying the crew to start loading those into the water. All right. Just, like, cut the ropes and... Give me a quick command check. Ooh. This one's going to be a D2, because, like, you did wear a necklace that brought the pirates to you and stuff. Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend a fortune point to add a D20 to this. Okay. Like, I know you guys are not super happy with me, but also, let's not die. But also, let's not die. No. Fuck. <laughs> well, if you're using, you're using the bonus die, right? Yes. That die, it, The die automatically counts as one. Oh, cool. As cool, if you cool, rolled cool, a cool. one. So even though you rolled, even though you rolled probably, what, two failures? Uh, I rolled one success and a failure and a natural 20. Well, okay. So let's let's rewind. One of them is already ma automatically a natural one. So I didn't so pull roll a natural so, you just, so cool. I didn't oh. hear that you rolled a natural twenty because that would be great. That would have meant that one of the two robots was on fire. Um, oh but, my god! <laughs> listen, that's what happens. It's a complication. Um, that would have been it's complicated. A complication. That's it's what a natural roll, rolling all those ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no. So you're you're. I'll. I'll I'll be merciful, even though I really shouldn't, and say that the... I'm too nice of a DM, guys. I really need to... It's fine. Um, uh, so your 20 became a 1, so you have two successes, and then you got a third success. Um, so that's three successes, so you do get a point of momentum. Um, if you want to spend that right away to quicken the pace of things, uh, you can. I will do that. Cool. So looking around, you flip over. The, the robots are the type where you have to like physically like flip them over, pull the sheets off, like get them into the water, like lift them up and throw them into the water. They're not sitting off the back of the like the side of the or the back of the ship. They're like sitting on the deck of the ship itself. Um, so thankfully, not at an area where they would be caught on fire quite yet. Or if they are, it's just like the tarp that's over them that's caught a fire, and the second you throw that off, the the wood is fine. Um, so you're, you're able to flip them over, get them into the water. What you do notice, however, is that um, they can hold, um, looks like they can hold each of them roughly about half a dozen people each. Um, maybe a little bit more if they're crammed. Uh, but you only find, scouring the deck, you only find three oars. so that's that's up to you guys so that that's up to you guys how you want to solve that but um what i can tell you is as this is going on um 
Let's see. Anybody else? Do you want to do anything while this is going on? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, go for it, sorry. Okay. Just real quick, can I say, um, can I, if I have to spin a fortune, I will. Can I retcon that? Because uh, I remember, I just remembered me and Fred intentionally hid our stuff when we saw something coming uh -huh. to board us. Can I say while the sailors and the crew turned on Titus during that whole deal that I like grabbed our bag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, Fred, if you want Fred, me well, to. Well, no, so what, how about that? How about this? How about this? How about this? While you were doing all of your. Like, while everybody was doing stuff, while things were being moved, Fred was going through the crates as they were getting okay. moved, moved to the other ship and pulling what was yours out of them. Okay. Um, so, so we'll say you and Fred have all of your all of the belongings that you guys have. Yeah, because that's yeah. yeah. Fred wasn't Fred wasn't doing it anything anyway. They they were just kind of chilling there. So um, yeah. Fred was thinking two steps ahead. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So that works. Deal. That works. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's it. Cool. So um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, with that, um, you're getting boats into the water. Uh, the crew is helping you with that, but there are some that are just like really lagging behind. Um, you can fit with those that were set on fire because you're going to leave those. Um, I mean, I don't know. Anything. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. You don't have a back to tank to Anakin Skywalker this shit. But <laughs> um, no. Uh, you are able to get everybody situated in a way where the there it's very precarious um but 18 plus 5 can fit on well actually yeah 18 ish plus 5 can fit in the two boats um in a way that is cramped and crowded and not very fun but is survivable. Not dead. But is survivable for <laughs> now as you begin watching pieces of the ship break and crack and crumble. Um, you jump in, uh, you grab, um, you guys have additional ropes so you can tie the two boats together if you would like um, and are able to make your way onto the water. As you do so, are you there, know, oh, go for it. Are there any planks of wood that are like falling off that could be used as like makeshift oars? Yeah, so there's plenty of wood, like the 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 mat, like between the mass, the mass, the mass is starting to begin to kind of crumble, and bits of that are is starting to fall. Um, so you have wood from that as it smashes into the deck of the ship, splintering and, and moving around. Uh, awesome, you have. Uh, uh, this, this is gonna sound weird. Was I able to grab my spear before we left? Was I able to grab my ass spear? Ah, spear. There's, there's a reason behind it. Ah, spear. There's a reason behind this. Um, hmm. go ahead and roll. Well, because there would have been one on the deck of the ship. Um, okay. so you would have had to grab one when you were over on the other. Right. Cool. What would I roll for this? What do I want? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Logan's trying to decide if he really wants to give you the spear since you already have a sword. Um, there's a reason behind my spear obsession. I mean, I know. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Do you have a Do you have a D one hundred by? You? We'll leave. Uh, I'm, yeah, not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it to the. I'm not. I'm gonna go back to my, my good old my good old fifty one. So you need a fifty one or higher. That's a fail. Forty eight. So no, you. Can I, spend, oh! can I spend a fortune point though? Can I spend a fortune point? <laughs> Um, you can give me three, three doom. doom. You can give me three doom, and you I'll allow, and I'll allow, and I'll allow you to reroll. Three doom and a reroll. All right. Fuck it. Fuck life. Fuck <laughs> life. Eighty. Eighty. Yes. For three doom. <laughs> oh, listen, because... listen. If there's any, I will, I will wiggle the rules for doom. Hey, you. Uh, on those three doom, can you put? Andrew on top of those three doom. Yeah. You know what? Andrew's I don't. Salt. I don't Andrew know. only. You know why? <laughs> only affect That's Andrew with these three doom. Yeah. So That's yeah. fine. Yeah. And um, the reason why I want my spear is as we go, if we saw planks of wood, I'm going to try to take a plank of wood, fasten it to my spear, and make an extra ore since there were only three. I like that. Okay. Um, I dig that. 
Cool. Um, that works. Go ahead and make a craft a craft check for me. Craft check. Okay. Ooh, craft. Which is Brain. your intelligence skill. Yeah. Ooh, that is one success. One success. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Fair, it's very simple enough. You grab some rope, tie it onto your spear and, and the, the, the wood. Uh, between you doing that, between Katrina kind of grabbing pieces of wood to bring over, and the crew members are also kind of in that survival mode. They don't want to be in this cramped space. So you start seeing them pulling larger pieces of wood or some of the floating crates and barrels, like grabbing what they can as the ship is beginning to now sink. Um, and they themselves are starting to put together makeshift rafts of their own to kind of create this like flotilla almost of of um, of rowboats and, and makeshift watercraft. Um, the... Ebony Rose, over the course of about the next hour, sinks. And actually, I'm going to make a quick craft check for these guys. Oh, dope. That's two successes, so that works. So yeah, they're able to successfully kind of over the next couple hours as night is, you know, it's still nighttime. You guys are still kind of adrift. Um, able to make an additional raft to house the remaining... Um, the remaining crew members not super comfortably but again enough for you guys to get by um the ebony rose fully sinks eventually to the point where the flames are just kind of sitting on the top of the water as the boat is semi semi uh what's the word semi floating semi sunk uh you know the bits and pieces of of the wood soaked oil kind of illuminating the top of the water the devil's shadow gone to the horizon gone to the dark out of sight as night continues in the quiet a tentacle no I'm kidding uh, <laughs> <laughs> no um, this is a family show the, oh my god <laughs> I'm sorry for giving him them doom, everybody. I'm sorry. Um, oh my god, I could spend doom on a Kraken attack. That would be dope. Um, no. It pulls... Yeah, pulls the next time when we roll new characters. It pulls Awesome into the water and he's that. No. Uh, no. But you guys are now kind of in this half-illuminated space as what remains of the, wo of the oil-soaked wood is floating on the top of the water. Um, it's dark. It's quiet. The waves and the water now start to shift and move as if whatever sorcery had caused the becalming has now been, you know, changed back. The ritual broken. What would you all like to do? Do I have a sense of how how far we are from shore? Um, from shore. Hmm. Not not like a port, but just like land. From land. Um, a couple. Arguably, in theory, about a day or two. It would have been soon if with the ships that you have, maybe longer. Um, it's been a while since you've been stuck in the middle of the ocean in a rowboat um, with limited supplies and no paddle, or well, limited supplies and, and you know three or four different vessels that are being made to, to kind of float along. Um, if the weather's good, you would imagine a couple of days. If it starts to storm could never get home possibly might be shorter might be yeah you <laughs> might you might end up just you just might end up uh you know falling into the drink um yeah, you technically don't the bottom of the ocean is land yeah um yeah i mean that might be closer than shore to be honest yeah. um <laughs> but no so it could be it could be a couple days it could be you know several days you're not quite sure um 
looking up at the stars, you have a general direction. I mean, you've been sailing all you know for for a good long while. You know how to follow the stars. You know how to plot a course. You know how to follow the sun during the day, right? And you know where you're generally where you're going. Um, the hard part is you're going to be out in the middle of nowhere without food, without water, with the sun beating down on you for however long it takes. That is the real challenge. That is what we're going to have to figure out. Yeah, I was going to say, as as the Ebony Rose is sinking, I would be keeping an eye out for you know, the food and the water that we had in the hold, which I imagine is in, like, casks and stuff. Mm-hmm. To food start popping up. Food would be in crates. Um, food would be in crates. Water would be in, in kind of casks and, and barrels, yes. Um, go ahead and make a D2 observation for me. And if anybody... I'll say one other person could all additionally roll. Or, yeah, additionally roll. You said observation? Correct. Oh. Okay. So it's a... It's a 12 skill check. I rolled a 12 and a 17, but because I'm a pirate, I have sharp senses and I can re roll 1d20. Ooh. But I gotta take the new roll. That fell off. That's a 7, so two successes. Two successes. Cool. So you have two successes additionally. How many did you get any successes there? Mm-hmm. There's or... mm-hmm. Oh no, so... that, that sounds like a 20. <laughs> Because because the way helping the way helping works in in Conan, at least to my understanding, and Daniel will yell at me if I'm wrong, um, is that the person who is doing the check has to succeed, and then after that, anybody else who's helping their role affects that role. Um, so, how did you do, Zuri? Uh, yeah, hold the roll the natural twenty. So, um, I am so sorry. Okay. Use a fortune. <laughs> do it. Do it. So I'll I'll use my fortune. <laughs> I use doom to negate the fortune. I can't do that. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, I use I'll all use twelve that. of my. Awesome finds, no awesome finds no food. Awesome finds no food. But you find the magic. But you find the magic conch. Um, <laughs> no. Um, Look at that. Woo. No, you um. You're gonna use a fortune to, to Yes. To make it a success. Yeah. I think is what you can Is think. that allowed? Uh, that's a good question. Because I rolled it without declaring it first. I wanna let the complication stand because we haven't had a complication yet. Okay. Cool, uh, mine. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it stand. Hold on to your fortune. We still have time left. Um, I'm gonna say you're able to secure um, a barrel of water and a couple barrels of food. However, barrels of food have been soaked with seawater because they're not they're not sealed. They're not. Like it's not like the like it's not like a cask of water where it's pretty heavily sealed to allow for to make sure no water gets out. Um, barrels of crates and crates of food are more kind of given that like leeway of having some wiggle room and space. Um, yeah, they got to keep bugs out, but you know you can't. There, there are cracks in wood. Um, so the, the the food the food stores are waterlogged. Um, Thankfully, it's mostly fruit and mostly things that would help prevent scurvy. Um, there are some like bread things, like like more like carby kind of breads and doughs that would be used to make um, or deck. Yeah, more more substantial food uh, while it's you guys are at sea. Um, <laughs> but those are destroyed, um, and then there are bits of jerky and dried meats and salted meats that are additionally waterlogged, but those would uh potentially be able to be dried out as they are already salted so like why not just throw more more salt onto it um 
Yeah. So so you you think you're in a good position. Um, the food that you've acquired for the 18 of you and water should last you at least a day. Maybe two if you ration it enough. Um, mm -hmm. My question for you all is, it's still night time. You guys all need to rest at some point. What is your plan as the crew now looks to the five of you to how best to proceed with not only the night, but the days to come? Did we happen to take any of the tarps that the like that were on top of the ships? Or are they like floating? Yeah, I'll, I'll say there's you can scavenge. Um, you can scavenge okay. the tarps from, from the, or would have thought to bring them with you, uh, throwing them in the water uh, to get rid of the, you know, flames, at least enough. Uh, if you douse them with enough water, if you submerge them long enough, you know, the fire from the oil will go away. So. Um, you have tarps, you have an ample amount of wood uh, yeah. at your so, disposal. Uh, Katrina is going to start, like, giving orders and having uh because she's she's strong she is not a strong person she can help with like the tying of knots but she's not good at like you know lifting things uh but she's trying to like set up some of the tarps over where we we are so that when the sun does come up we're not getting baked okay so uh, trying to create like a shelter okay go ahead and give me a, that's very easy. I'm not going to make you. That's a simple do command. But for the craft, go ahead and I'm going to make you roll a craft for me. Cool. And I'll make it a D, a D1. It's simple enough. All you're doing is you're putting up little houses on that, you know. To success. To success. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, very easy for you to be able to do. Uh, throughout the course of the night, the crew, um, one, they're, 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 the crew is is attempting to craft these in, to to cover the majority of the rafts, or at least the you know create a rotation where some of them can be you know you could rotate where the cover is. Um, we'll say that both of the rowboats are where the um, where you guys have provided shade. It's a little bit more. It's a little bit difficult for the handmade rafts to be able to construct something that makes it more like a home. Um, so we'll say that the rowboats are where the shaded portions are for the morning and for, for when the sun is up. Um, and you guys can make rotations as such. Um, this is going to be somewhat of a survivalist kind of check situation as the days proceed. You guys aren't going to have much, much, much chance to rest. Being the leaders, you can obviously delegate. Um, but a lot of the decision making and a lot of the choices of how you guys are going to continue on are going to be up to you. The food is only going to last you a day. I can tell you right now, you'll be a, you'll you will be at least out there for more than a day. So how you acquire food will also be up to you, using your skills and your yeah, using your skills <laughs> using your skills and abilities to the fullest. Um, Fred does have a bow, so I can make rolls for Fred for, for ranged attacks to help with the procuring of, of other things. Um, but as night or as the as the night ends and the day begins, your first day at sea, I need you to do a couple of things. Um, let me look and double check. First of all, I need you to make survival roll. All of you to make survival rolls. This will be a D2. I made one. If you... If you I'm did gonna use one of my fortune points. Okay, so that will be an automatic success. Yeah. If, I haven't used one yet. Um, oh, shit. No, you have food, so you don't have to worry about it for day one. I'm sorry. Well, that'll be your day two. That'll be your day two roll. Um, cool. That'll be your day two roll. You have you have enough food and supplies for day one where you won't have to roll about it. But So we'll say day one goes on without an issue. Um, but what I need is I need... I will need probably tr uh, Titus to roll me a sailing check after he's done rolling his... 
looking. I don't know what he's looking at, but I think I've got a thing for this. Do the thing. I think I got a thing for this. Well, he waits. Julie, do the thing. <laughs> um, well, uh, while Titus is looking up something to see what he can do, Conan ventures in an age undreamed of. You can find it at the Modiphius website. It's one of their first products. I think it is their first product. And it's really, really cool. has a lot of amazing pieces of art. has an awesome map. The book comes with one of these little cord things. Uh, so that way you know where your page is at all times. Uh, and it comes with, the main book comes with all of the DM materials, an adventure, as well as all of the player options. Additionally, if you want to buy some stuff for your player, you can get the player handbook, which is significantly smaller than the Adventures in the Age of Dream Book, but has all the materials needed for you to be a player in Conan, the TTRPG. Tristan, did you figure out what you were looking for? Uh, yes. Um, so you said survival. Uh, survival is two successes. Yeah. Awesome. It's at 11. I rolled a 7 and a 2. And then... And then go ahead and give sailing. me a sailing, please. Okay. Uh, since we're still in my home waters, it's going to be reduced by 1. Uh, which is good because I only got one success. Cool. Perfect. Um, so you are able to start navigating. So the, th the first day, you guys are able to, to navigate in a direction that you th you are pretty certain will, will gravitate you toward land. Um, and thankfully, since you have the boats, since you have oars, since you have a way to block yourself from the sun now, um, the tests for survival and the fact that you have food makes the day a little bit easier the crew is very thankful for all of your help and support and knowledge um they they also are very trained sailors but something you can tell there's a this aura of almost like failure not only to protect their ship but like their captain is also missing uh or dead as far as they know um moving on to the night Using your role, you are able to navigate through the stars, directing the crew to kind of move as you do. Your water, you're able to ration out longer than two days. The body and, you know, food and water, you're able to... are able to sustain you longer than you should, but the, the food that you're, we're looking at for you guys to feed 18 of you sustainably, you will need more as you move into the second day. So my question for you all is, how do you do that? As we are on the water, are there fish visible in the water? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you guys, um, it's, it's deep ocean water, but you can tell that there is sea life that traverses this top layer. You can see turtles, you can see fish occasionally you'll see the odd like you know pelican or like you know like avian creature that would eat fish mm -hmm. um and then every so often you'll see a fin emerge from the surface of the water and grow closer as sharks are following you uh-huh well while these sharks are following us and i see everything i'm going to take the piece of wood off of the spear that i have and as fish go by, I would like to try and spearfish them. Okay. If possible. Go ahead and give me uh, I'll make, yeah, make it a melee. Yes! Thank you. Thank god my number's 13. Two successes. Two successes. Two successes is what you needed. Because it is a little bit harder to, to, to spear fish from the, you know, from a boat that's moving, right. and the angle in the water and all that. Um... But so you are able to, throughout the course of the day, as the ship is moving, you know, spearfish mm -hmm. here, spearfish there, you know, get some larger ones. You know, you, you do the whole thing where you attach a rope to the end and give it to a couple of the sailors so when you throw it, they can pull right away. Um, right. Taking the time to secure food. Um, the water is 
or the sky is clear today on the second day. There's no clouds to cover. Um, your survival rolls, uh, if you got a two or higher, uh, you are fine. If you did not succeed that check, you, you lose one point of vigor. As the heat and the uh, as the heat and just kind of the the, the atmosphere of the, the, the being on a boat in open ocean um, without your rum ham um, weighs on you. Moving on. Actually, day two sailing check for you, Titus. Yes. Oh. And then whatever you want to say. Yeah, I also had a question. Or a, a thought, rather. Uh, that's an 11 and a 9. <clears throat> so two successes. Awesome. Um, additionally, if there's anything else that you guys think is within your skill set to keep motivations high, also. Katrina is spending the day, because she's not useful in the physical skills. Uh, but she's spending the day kind of checking in with each of the uh, sailors, um, kind of keeping their spirits up, uh, doing as much, like, healing as she can, mostly just, like, binding wounds. And... Go ahead and make a council roll for me. That is one success. Awesome. Um, I'd say here it's a little bit more difficult. You don't have all of the resource, all of your resources at your disposal, and some of them, you know, again, are, are slightly waterlogged or damaged. So you're using what you can to to help others. Um, marginally successful, but successful enough to keep spirits kind of in that upward progression. Yeah, just trying Definitely. to keep everybody sane. Yep. Yeah, keeping everybody sane, keeping everybody motivated. Those who are extremely hurt, um, you tend to first, you know, there are some that you're looking at who have, you know, most of them seem to only have minor cuts and bruises, but there are a handful that have been, you know, heavily wounded um, in the in the fighting. And so those ones are like, they're still, they're blood on the ship, they're holding and like kind of doing, but some of them, you, you get the realization that some of them even just doing the bare minimum to help them kind of move into that passing spit stage too is enough to keep motivation within the within the crew of like yeah people are going to die but like we we as a group are, are going to thrive and survive and even in like the middle of the day katrina has like a cloak that she's been wearing this whole time it's very wet now uh but she is like it is always on even like blaring sun so whether that affects survival or not for her, that is a choice that she is making. All right, I'll take that into consideration. That 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 that's actually a uh, yeah. Uh, Zuri, anything for you? Um, I had a question. Um, since we slept, do I still keep all my wounds and trauma, or does that go down one, or how does that um, work? Technically, you guys, while you guys have slept and rested. You guys aren't in a position where you can heal your wounds. Um, this is very much survival. Like, you're in survival mode even when you're out. Even when you're, like, resting, you're, it's like that half rest where you're not sure where you're going. So you are kind of sleeping with one eye open. Got it. Okay, so I'm still messed up. You're still, yeah, you're pretty fucked up, if I recall. Cool. Um, yes. Um, that was my question. I have another one. Yeah. How far away are those sharks? How far away are those sharks? Um, yeah. They're they're close enough. I'd say um, within close and medium range. Would I know like how much like a shark tooth or a shark like skin would cost? Like even in survival mode, Siri is still thinking about that coin. <laughs> um. In port cities, you've seen. So these souvenirs, um, these necklaces that have shells, uh, and oftentimes you know shark teeth attached to them. Okay. Cool. Uh, I hate myself. Uh, you know that you know that they would have at least some minor value. Um, not anything super extravagant or expensive, but like to the common folk, uh, they're like, "Oh, cool! I got a shark tooth on my necklace." Uh, okay. Yeah. So not worth. 
not worth ju- not not worth jumping into a water. I wouldn't and, jump. No, <laughs> not no, worth not I worth fighting do. a shark over. Um, you know that shark skin is like the outside of it is waterproof or water resist like water resistant. Um, so you know it does have some waterproofing capability if you skinned if you were to skin the hide of of a, of a shark. Um, mm-hmm. But again. That's up, not that's up. That's up. That's up to you to decide how, um, how much, no. how much you need that stuff. No, no. I because like <laughs> in, in Zuri's mind, they were coming up with a plan while eyeing our weakest like crew member. But no, we're not that desperate. <laughs> but yeah. I still keep an eye on whoever's doing the worst. Cool. Um. There's one individual um, named Jacques uh, who is uh, particularly worse for wear. Uh, Katrina has been spending a majority or a, a decent portion of her days tending to Jacques' wound. Uh, but it just doesn't look like he's going to get any better. Um, yeah. Moving on to day, the, the days that follow, uh, go ahead and give me another sailing check for day three. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I would have also noting that there are seabirds taking the waterlogged, like, hardtack and stuff and try to spread it out wherever I could so that it would dry out a little bit Mm -hmm. so we can use that as maybe bait for the seabirds. Bait for the seabirds. Good call. Yeah, you definitely can do that throughout the day. There's enough sun. Okay, so that's one success on sailing check. Uh, six. But since we're in my home waters, the difficulty is reduced by one. So I don't know cool. if that matters. It does because it's you're now moving farther away from your home waters. So I, I, you're still relatively in it, but you're you don't know your exact location. That's the problem. So like you're in that weird border territory. Um, so while I know that you are, um, and it would count toward it. Your difficulty is increasing slightly. Um, if you are going to attempt after the second day, the, the hard tack is enough to is dried out enough to be used as bait. So if you'd like to use it as bait, um, I'll say for that the it depends on how you're doing it. But if you're throwing it in the water for the birds to swoop down and get, it'd be a ranged attack. If you're going to try to keep it on the deck of the ship and get them to come down or the boats and get them to come down, it would be melee. So I, I think. This is not the first time that Titus has been in this situation or a similar situation. Um, and if you throw it in the water, the fish are going to get it. So um, I think what he's doing is waiting for the birds to kind of be like overhead and close and then <clears throat> tossing it into the air over the boat to try to like get their attention. And as soon as he gets the attention of one of the birds and it starts like swooping down to, to get the the pieces of bread, he'll throw them lower and lower oh. until one of the birds gets down into melee range. And then he's going to stab that tree. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do, because um, cause I think Fred can assist you a little bit with their short bow, um, or with their hunting bow. Um, go ahead and give me a survival check. Okay. And then I'll, I'll roll for Fred to do some ranged stuff. Are you fucking kidding me? I just rolled the natural one for Fred. Ah! Yo! Yeah! Um, Let's go, Fred. The other one was a 19, so dangerously close, <laughs> dangerously <laughs> close to being a complication. But, no. We're good. Um, yeah, I, I rolled a 19 and uh, an 11. A 19 so that's and... one success. One success. Okay. Um... I'd say that's enough to get them within range for uh, that's enough to get them within range for Fred to pull out their bow and go to work and then you get you have the the raft you know the makeshift raft that the crew assembled that's like your go out and get it uh, and bring it back kind of vehicle um, so you guys are able to get a decent amount of food from that uh, awesome if you still want to try to catch some fish go ahead and make a melee attack for me uh, if there's anything else anybody else would like to do, they can do that as well. 
That is one success for me for fish. Okay. Is it still D2? Um, I'll say, well, so we're looking at a day, like getting food for the day. Like every day you're getting and trying, attempting to get enough food to last you the day. So I'll say between, okay. um, between Fred's natural, or between Fred's two successes and your one success, that's enough to get you guys the food that you need for the day. Um, okay. water is another, another problem though, because you guys are slowly running out of water. Water will likely only last you one more day, uh, at the bare minimum. Um, or, um, at the, or at the most, I mean. Ka Katrina's gonna try and do something smart that may not work um, on one of the makeshift rafts that doesn't have shelter. Uh, she's gonna take a bit of the tarp, and it, basically I'm trying to create an evaporation device <laughs> where I'm using the heat mm -hmm. from the sun to evaporate the water, get it uh, ha so it condenses then on a bit of tarp and drips down into little containers. Yeah, you can definitely do that, and you can use the you can use the barrel that has the water to do that. So, um, in order to do that, though, go ahead and give me a craft check. See how successful you are at it. Uh, those are two successes. Up? What? Never mind. Two, su two successes? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, a hundred percent. He's smart. Yeah. Uh, you can do that, no problem. Set it up. You guys will have, you know, you guys will have some sort of sustainable water. Um, pretty slow, but not, but but at least it'll be something to give you guys like a sip here and there. Um, Zuri, uh, Jacques is is looking worse this day uh, than he did the day prior. Um, his face is very pale. His cheeks and his forehead are starting to get like that kind of clammy, like sweaty look to them. Um, and he's just not, he's not looking very good. Yeah, and yeah. sorry, since we're in close quarters, you would have noticed that uh, Titus's armor looks very similar to the, the skin of the sharks that are following us. Like, shark leather armor is a thing. Is a thing. It is a thing. Um,. I don't know if that affects your decisions. Ah, oh, just and somebody's oh. and somebody's really good at crafting, apparently. Also, so like you got, yeah. there you go. I feel like I'm in mixed company. Um, <laughs> don't know how well I this love it because I don't. I don't have to spend doom to make you do decisions that you know are doomy. So, um, hmm, <laughs> how do I go about casual murder, <laughs> selling this to the group? <laughs> Um, mm hmm, mm hmm. So I will act as if I am tending as well to Jock's needs. So I will <laughs> oh, place myself close to him. Okay. And then I guess when we go to sleep, I will take a watch. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So in the no. night, um, everybody go ahead and give, make make me survival checks. Still a DC of two. Uh, point of order really quick. Um, Titus, being a pirate, <clears throat> has, a, has a love of uh, a good rum. Would, would he possibly have like a... a little water skin or a flask or something of, of rum. Roll D one hundred. <laughs> if you don't like your roll you can spend two. Uh God, I I rolled D one hundred so infrequently. Uh what's the what's the number with the two on it? With like the two Well so I rolled I rolled oh, did a ten you... and an eleven. A ten and eleven. What? It was zero. Oh, 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 this is a D12. Sorry, I'm dumb. <laughs> 110, 110%. percent It's like 100. Wait, what is this? It's a super success. His, his power level is above 100. <laughs> it's super effective. Uh, it's super. Here we go. So uh, 50 and a zero. A 50 and a zero, so that'd be 50. Um, I need a, a you need wow. a 51. <laughs> Wild. 
Do you want to want to give me want to give me some doom? How bad do you want the rum? <laughs> you know what for you know what for rum? I'll make it one doom point. Deal. For comfort, for comfort Deal. rum, I will give you. That's a, that's a that's a Titus doom. Yeah. Comfort a, rum. a TD. A TD. <laughs> God, I love how I can just like gamble. I can just oh, gamble. I can just gamble doom here. It's I don't even have. Yeah. To. I love Wild. It. I love it. So. Titus, at some point during this third day, Titus would pull out this little flask of rum and go over to Katrina. And... Jack's not looking good. You... I don't know if this will help or not, but you know, maybe ease ease the pain a little bit and give her the the rum to kind of help in her okay. her ministering to the wounded. Cool. Um, yeah. He's a sailor. Yeah. It won't do any harm. Uh. Was this a sailing check? Uh, survi- survival. If you did okay. not get a two, if you did not get two successes, you, you lose um, another point of... Is my survival just straight survival or adjusted? Because of the, the, the fact I'm wearing a freaking heavy cloak. Oh, no, yours is fine. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I I'm... only got one. <laughs> okay, so if you, didn't, if, you, if you didn't get two successes, you lose another point of vigor. Um... Okay. I rolled I an have... eight and a one. Ooh, another momentum. Another momentum to the pool. Um, to I have a question. I have Vagabond. Uh, mm-hmm. The road is more home than a city or town. Reduce difficulty of survival test by one. Uh, this may reduce difficulty down to zero to so just do. Would the ocean count as a road of travel? I mean, sea roads are a thing. Yeah, I mean, there are there are such things as sea Routes. lanes. Um, I would say that you could lanes. be a. Va- I mean, a vagabond on the sea would be a pirate, but like, I mean, beside the point, you're a, a well traveled individual. Um, I will, I will allow it. Um, cool. Yeah, I'd say you're a well traveled individual, and that means like taking river, like because you'd be on a river boat, and like that would be the same kind of check. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. Yeah. I may change that at some point. But we'll see. <laughs> um, as of right now, that 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 checks out. That's fine. I'm guessing you succeed. Okay. Are you succeed then? With one, yes. <laughs> yep. Cool. Awesome. Um, cool. As night falls, um, Jacques falls asleep. He's got that little bit of like the rum, the rum sleep. Um, he, he gave him a it gave him enough to kind of knock him out, or at least kind of give him. Dull the pain, dull his senses, and put him into a nice, a nice little rest there. Cool. Zuri. Cool, cool. Um, am I the only one awake? I mean, no. There's, there's people on the other, the other ships. Uh, you would have moved Jacques to a place where he could sit underneath the shade. Um, so he would have been on one of the, the two rowboats. Um, there are other people up, but mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot of light. So it's difficult to see what's going on, other than the little bit of light from the moon and the occasional torch that you guys light. All right, I will uh, very stealthily nick Joss, uh, Jock's arm and put it in the water. All right, uh, go ahead and make it. I'm going to make you make a stealth check for that. See okay. how how successfully you're able to hurt this individual. Without waking him up. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to spend a fortune on that one or wait. Wow. I mean, wow. Can come. we? Wow. Can we just? Mm, I know the person okay. that really Zuri really is now. I like this. This is what this is kind of okay. morality are we having here? Holy shit! I love how I have the parties like let's survive, and then the other ones like I want to make a, a, a shark skin leather armor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How do Whoa. I turn a quick? How do I turn a quick profit of this situation? Um, always, always. Uh, I got a success. Was a, it a D two or D one? Single one? Nope, that's enough. Yeah, that's enough. Jacques okay. Is, Jacques is in pain, so like, what's a little bit more pain? Uh, and he's also got oh. rum. So, yeah, you're able to put his arm into the water. Mm-hmm. The slight trail of blood coming from him, not enough to mm-hmm. kill him, but enough to to, oh. to draw the scent. As the night continues, give me an observation check. 
<laughs> God, I wish, I wish, I wish Katie was here to talk you out of this, but it's okay. I'm sure, actually, yeah, Fred, you know what? Fred, Fred, would, have Fred, me out of it. Fred would, uh, I don't know, I mean, Fred might have <laughs> encouraged you, who knows? Um, uh, I got it one success, a three. A three. Um, yeah. You notice the water starting to ripple behind the ship as you see a fin start to emerge as it draws closer and closer to your to your robo. Um. I. I nudge Titus because I feel like he'd be more down for this. <laughs> Titus, Titus, I, what? What? I think we have a bit of a problem here. Um, I feel like that's all we have. Are, oh, is problems? Yeah. One more problem. One more problem, and I direct his attention to the ripple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can clearly see that there's now like this ripple of an in shark fin cut protruding from the water following your craft. Ever so slowly, you watch as it occasionally like will dip down and like shift underneath and move around your rowboat. Um, but you, you also see be... you also see the hand in the water uh, that's bleeding. Uh, just just to be clear, because you know. But this can be an opportunity. One more day of food. For everyone. That's a shark. That's, I mean, that might be a little bit more than one day. You're not wrong. <clears throat> uh, guy, I would like to, I would like to roll off. Like, I'd like to have a little, a little, a little rollies action here. Cool. What? Because, wait, wait, wait. Hey, what are you? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to insight? Are you trying to? I'm. I'm trying to figure out. Yes, a shark is a lot of food. There's also a lot of risk involved in taking down a shark, and where there's one, there are usually more. And it's nighttime, mm -hmm. um, and Tristan is fucking terrified of sharks. So <laughs> there's there's that also. Uh yeah, so I don't know if it's if it's inside exactly so much as just like Are you trying to letting... glean are you trying to are you trying to glean into Zuri's mindset or are you trying to glean into this whether or not the situation is the best situation? Um, I, he knows that it's not the best situation. I I basically I'm I'm I want to know if Zuri is convincing Titus to go along with this. Oh, okay. So yeah, go ahead. Like and it's like a persuade, basically. Roll an insight versus. Uh, so uh, Titus roll a insight, and then um, Zuri roll a persuade. Cool. Uh, two d two d twenties each. Whoever has the highest is the winner. Who has whoever has the most successes is the winner. I only have one success. I only have one too. God damn it! Rollies. Both of you just roll straight d twenty. Hey. Son of a bitch. It was only a two. I rolled a one. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> and for this we were playing this for this for this instance, rollies only works with the high, whoever rolls higher. So Okay. Rollies is have always to be higher. this Sharks are not to be trifled with. No, no, that's why I came to the expert. It is a lot of food. Mm -hmm. I think... We don't know how many more days we have left, and Katrina is dying in that jacket. <laughs> it's a it's a big cloak. Is Huge that... cloak. I don't know why she hasn't taken it off. It's like starting is to get like sweat, sweat stains at this point. Fastenings to her oh, in man. some way? Is it, I, I have know. no idea. Yeah, this seems, could help a lot of people. It's really hot. Uh, is Asim awake? I'm probably hearing commotion. Maybe I would. Would I awaken if I heard this commotion? Yeah. 
nobody's truly asleep, but no, but okay. everybody's exhausted to the point where like laying there is enough to like put them in that weird like dr- like dream state almost where they're like mm. half asleep, half awake. Yeah, it's like alpha sleep basically. Yeah. Okay. So you'd you'd be there enough to like kind of hear it and um you know, so if you wanted to wake up, you could. Sure, I'm going to wake up. Yeah, I'll kind of I'll kind of nudge him. Asin, hey. we're gonna need your spear for this. For, for what? What are, what are these? There's sharks, um, and we have to fight them off. Unfortunately. Oh, I just couldn't wait till morning. I just couldn't wait till morning. Mm, okay. Okay. Where are they? As Austin gets up, you know, slits up and starts to brandish the spear. Point where, where, where are they? Just here. And <clears throat> Titus will point out kind of the the pattern the shark is is moving in, taking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So for this, so this will be two. This will be twofold. I will need Awesome to make a melee attack when you can. Yes. Um and then you guys will need once the spear is in place you guys will need to haul the the fish or the the shark up into the boat and finish killing it which yeah. for this it's not not going to be a fight it's more so like how do you get onto the boat skill check it's, yeah. it's going to be more of a skill check yep um awesome how did you do uh i should go play craps because i rolled a six and an eight a six and an eight awesome so two successes perfect you're able to get the spear in there um secured and enough where like when you get that tug back it's not uh like it's hooked in there like even though your spear is not barbed you got that little bit where you can mm. pull when you pull it's going to pull this thing out of the water with you um mm. i need an athletic check from one of you if somebody would like to assist they can or if both of you would like to assist you can yeah i'll i'll definitely you do it definitely assist and as we're Come on. Can I do some type of acrobatics to try to maneuver the shark so it doesn't like tilt our rowboat? Like, I'll say that, of, could like, be, that could be that could be part of your momentum. that could be yeah. part of your helping. I'll I'll take okay. that. I'll give that. Yeah. So you'd roll. So you'd roll a single d twenty, and then whoever's doing the athletics okay. check will roll the two d twenty. Okay. This is going to be a little bit harder. This is for for sure going to be a daunting. So a d uh, a d three. All right, I succeeded. Okay, so your successes are are based on the success of whoever is doing the actual check. So that's either Tristan or Awesome, or Titus or Awesome. Okay. Was that athletics? Correct. That's two successes. Two successes. Yeah, plus two the, successes. Plus the success from Zuri. Awesome. So you pull are able to pull out the shark from the water. With that, the three of you able to go ham. I mean, it causes a little bit of a commotion, but Zuri stabilizing the boat while Awesome and um, Titus go ham and, and finish the shark, killing it, give you a dead shark, which you then can do stuff with. Um, <laughs> can we use this to sort of corral the gang? Like Cor- corral the gang, like we have like lift their spirits. I oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's like Lots oh, food, I mean the shark. This is like shark. this is probably at least a like sixty to ninety pound shark. So while most of it isn't gonna be like it's gonna have a good chunk of meat on it. So you guys are gonna have food for a good bit. Um, yeah. But what I'm gonna say is that over the next several days, you have enough food. It does rain lightly, not a storm, but enough to cause some commotion. Um, but you do get water as well. Morale is high. Jacques unfortunately dies. Um, he did what he was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so was his and and in the days that follow, or in the couple of days that follow, eventually you begin to see more and more birds, and then land an island. And as you row toward that island, eager and excited, that is where we are going to call our session today. today I almost said tonight. Today. <laughs> um, Woo. But yeah, thank you all for 
watching. Thank you all for taking part. We're gonna go quickly around the horn real quick, starting with Zuri. Where can we find you? What are you doing? And then we'll also talk about our sponsors and things like that. Yes. Okay. So Wish Warlock on all socials. You can also find me a podcast form called Whiskey Reacts, uh, where me and my friend Haley Schumacher, we uh, review our favorite forms of entertainment while drinking whiskey. That's fun. We should have a new episode up uh, next weekend, finishing off uh, like a catch up of Critical Role. And then we're just going to do a little breezy summer movie next. So that should be fun. Uh, you can also find me over at Logan's channel, The Red Hair Inn. We do uh, Tales from the Red Hair Inn as we are kicking off our Dust to Dust series. We just dropped our episode two yesterday. So fun, so spooky. You guys got to check it out. Um, and that's it for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll swing down to Awesome. Where can we find you? What are you doing? Uh, what is up, everyone? Andrew J. Landy checking in. Andrew J. Landy on Twitter and Instagram or twitch.tv slash Duralath. Um, hey, Vampire the Masquerade Port Saga. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. Season 1 already out. Season 2 officially announced. The trailer is out, so take a listen to that. Again, Vampire the Masquerade Port Saga, wherever you get your podcast. That's Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify. Just type in Vampire the Masquerade Port Saga. Check it out. I play Dante Mendoza uh, in Season 1. Uh, well, you know what? I'm just not going to give any spoilers whatsoever because you, the fans, got to check it out. So, again, wherever you get your podcasts. And above all, have a wonderful weekend. And, again, thanks for stopping by. Oh, yeah. Uh, moving on over to uh, Katrina. Tell us who you are, what Hello you do. everybody. Uh, I'm dollar store DM, dollar underscore store, underscore DM, um, mostly on Instagram, but also now on YouTube. I run the Art of Adventure web series, uh, where I bring a bunch of creators to play one shots of D&D, and then we create things for the next group of wonderful creators. Um, there will be an episode coming out whenever I finish editing it. <laughs> Work is difficult um but yeah mostly on instagram doing a lot of like crafting fun stuff and budget builds oh yeah uh next for the players titus yeah so um find me at plus one crafting on instagram uh really just instagram i have a tiktok too but you don't want to look at that um <laughs> it's it's terrible uh but i i make stuff like it's really good for stuff. for dungeons and dragons games and also you know pathfinder or warhammer or whatever whatever games you enjoy so check it out hell yeah uh, and I'm your game master, Logan Hanley. You can find me over at the Red Hair Inn, where we do D&D 5e homebrew. Uh, we have the Tales from the Red Hair Inn, which are mini-series or one-shots um, with guest DMs and players. And then I also GM the Acrium Expeditions, uh, which is our 5e homebrew campaign set in the lands of Ecrium. Um yeah, we have next episode on Tuesday night. So yeah, come check that out. We also have a new Tale from the Red Hair Inn starting on Monday. Uh, Halls of the Mad King. So, yeah. Come on over and check all that stuff out. Um, and then last but not least, sponsor information. Uh, Session Zero Clothing. Uh, D&D Inspired Streetwear, which is really nice. I have a couple of their pieces. Uh, they do amazing, amazing work. Uh, the shirts are really awesome and, and nicely detailed. Uh, you can use the code ORDER, all caps, for 15% off at checkout. Uh, next, Norse Foundry. Really, really awesome artisan dice makers. Uh, I have a set of their uh, Bloodstone dice uh, in my dice bag somewhere. Uh, but they're beautiful. They're awesome, and I very rarely take them out because I don't want to damage them. But they are beautiful and amazing. They're they're the best dice that I think I... Some of the best dice that I think I have for, like, actual, like, hard material, like gemstone dice. Um, definitely check them out. Use the code TIO, all caps, 15, for 15% 15 off at checkout. Um... Next, Mithril Armory, the makers of the amazing Tindy 20s and Sketch Dice. Use the code INITIATIVE, all caps, for 10% off their web store. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, my, hands down my favorite um, dice maker, Umbral Oculus Dice. They, uh, the amazing Taryn Hackett, who's here at the Initiative Order uh, and plays Eden of the Briar over and GM's Dust to Dust over on the Red Hair Inn, um, makes beautiful 
artisanal dice from beyond the veil they have multiple different options and colors and it they are absolutely wonderful for conan at least for me because mine always roll low because um whatever curses she put into them make that happen um but use the code initiative all caps for 10 percent off a full set at her dice store at the dice store over there uh, i believe the next round of dice that are going to be out for sale will be coming soon so definitely check on Oculus out on the socials um to see when they are going to drop next um other than that thank you all for joining us on this session of doom and misery as the crew is now stuck at sea but there is some hope an island land is before them but what awaits we'll figure that out in two weeks when we come back for our next session of conan waves stained crimson have a good day, have a good weekend, be safe, and happy adventures, my friends. Bye.